What's up YouTube? This is an acorn squash and it has absolutely nothing to do with what we're talking about today. Alright, so today we are talking about full-time traveler residency. There are three main states which full-time travelers tend to lean towards. Those states are Texas, Florida, and South Dakota. So the reason these states are the best and most popular for full-time travelers, but anybody really, is because they have no state income tax, no interest or dividend tax, no property tax on vehicles, and comparatively cheap registration fees and sales tax. Now that you understand what makes these states the most popular states for full-time travelers, now let's get into the differences between the three states so that you might be able to tell which state that you would like to belong to. All right, so starting with Texas, some of the benefits of Texas are state park discounts, which can really add up if you're spending a lot of time in the state. And you can also renew your license by mail in Texas. So this makes Texas the only one of the three states which you can uh, renew your license by mail rather than having to travel to the state and go through the DMV lines and deal with that headache We all know that headache. All right, so those are the upsides of Texas now Let's talk about the downsides of the Lone Star State. So Texas has a 6.25% state sales tax and then some localities have a tax on top of that. This makes Texas the highest sales tax of the three states. So even though you can renew your license online in Texas, they also have state safety inspections. So that means even though you're renewing your license online, you still have to go back to the state annually to get your vehicle inspected. Texas is the only one of the three states that has state vehicle inspections. All right, so next up is Florida, state number two. The benefits of belonging to the Sunshine State are, first of all, just that. Uh, it's the Sunshine State. It is the perfect place to get away during the winter, like tons of RVers and just travelers travel to Florida in the winter to get escape the cold climates of the northern portion of the U.S. So if you're going to spend a lot of time there, that's something to consider. Florida also has state park discounts, so this kind of goes hand in hand with the last one. If you're spending the winters there anyway, the state park discounts might actually end up saving you a lot of money in the long run. And lastly, Florida has no state safety inspections on vehicles, which means you only have to go back to the state technically once every eight years when you have to renew your license. All right, so now for the downsides of Florida. First of all, Florida does have a 6% sales tax plus locality tax on top of that, which can be up to 8%, I believe is the number. So that puts it above Texas by a little bit, but still below our third contender. Now the second downside of Florida is of course hurricanes. So with everything in the news lately, I'm sure you've seen Irma just wreak havoc on Florida and if you are spending a lot of time there that's definitely a downside to consider during hurricane season. Alright so last but not least is South Dakota. It is my home state. Uh, you know I don't spend a whole lot of time there but it is my home state. Now the benefits of calling the Mount Rushmore state your home. I know Mount Rushmore state is a terrible terrible nickname but anyway the benefits of calling it your home are, first of all, the lowest sales tax of the three. South Dakota has a 4.5% sales tax and no locality taxes on top of that, which puts it at the very bottom of the list of the three states. It has the lowest sales tax. And then on top of that, uh, you don't have to pay sales tax on a vehicle. South Dakota simply has a 4% excise tax, so an even lower tax on vehicles. Um, definitely was lower than my previous home state of Virginia, way lower. So that's really nice, if you're, especially if you're buying vehicles or if you're going to purchase a rig soon or something like that. Now, the next benefit of living in South Dakota and something that I'm a huge fan of is super low vehicle insurance. So South Dakota has like a much lower vehicle insurance 
rates than most places. Just for an example, when I changed my residency to South Dakota and switched my insurance to South Dakota, I added my fifth wheel to my insurance and my insurance still decreased by almost half. So that just shows you how low their insurance costs really are. I believe for my truck and my fifth wheel, I pay $150 a month for insurance, which is not bad at all. And last but not least, there are no safety inspections for your vehicle. None at all. You only have to come back to the state once every five years if you so desire. I'm sure you'll come back more than that. South Dakota has a lot to offer. It's a beautiful state. It's got the Badlands and it's got a couple other just gorgeous places that you don't really see in a lot of other areas of the U.S. So it's definitely worth coming back to. So uh, what about the downsides of South Dakota, you might ask? It's cold. That's the only downside that I've seen so far. As far as like residency goes for tax purposes and, and just paying less money to live, it's the best state I've seen so far. In all my research, it was the best to do. And they're extremely permanent traveler friendly. So like they understand what you're doing. You don't need to hide it. There's no like, you can just be like, yeah, I'm living um, on the road full time at the DMV and they will help you with the process from there. So everybody's super understanding of it. They know a lot of people do it from there and it's completely accepted. So you don't feel like you're cheating the system by becoming a resident there. So now for the main question, which state is right for you? So after hearing this, you're probably thinking, well, South Dakota is the clear choice. It is the best by far of all three states to become a full-time traveling resident of. And you would probably be right. There are a couple exceptions to the rule, however. If you have family or friends who are already residents of Florida or Texas, it might be worth it to call that place home. And the reason for this is that it will save you money on a mail forwarding service. And it will also just make the residency process a lot easier because you do have that permanent street address. It looks good. Nobody's going to ask you any questions about it. And all around, it's just like, it's just less of a headache probably. And you've got a person in the state who can receive your mail. The other exception to the rule would be if you spend the majority of your time in Texas or Florida. If you spend most of the year in one of these states, it might be worth it to become a resident of that state. Partially because you are a resident of that state basically if you're spending the majority of your year in that one place. You could also utilize the uh, state park discounts a lot more. So you would have to do the math see how much money it would save you, um, and then figure out which state you would want to become a resident of based on that. So if one of those exceptions doesn't include you, welcome to South Dakota. We appreciate your small taxes that you pay each year, and uh, we look forward to seeing your face once every five years. So if you learned something from this video, go ahead and touch that subscribe button, become a resident of my YouTube channel, and then Join me on my journey, find out more about RV living, full-time RV living, some tips to save you money, and you can also see more of Amelia's face, so make sure you subscribe. Alright, see you guys next time.